I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about rebuilding a relationship with your ex. This is so important, and we have to talk about it if your goal is to repair a relationship with your ex. If you would like to speak with us individually about your situation, we are available for that. So you can head to our website and book a coaching session with us if it's something that you're interested in. Absolutely. You know, so many people get stuck on no contact, mm -hmm. doing no contact, and they get overwhelmed by that, and so they don't focus on anything else while they're in no contact. But you have to prepare yourself, because what's gonna happen when your ex reaches out <laughs> if you haven't done anything else but focus on no contact? How are you gonna be any different? How are you gonna be prepared for re repairing this relationship? Like, you know, relationships, usually fall apart for various reasons, whatever yours may be. And you have to be able to fix those issues. And that sometimes means fixing things that are going on within you or your understanding of yourself or your understanding of your partner's needs. And of course their issues and their struggles in relationships. So it's not easy to do, but you have to look at all the various areas and components oh, yeah in order to be able to do something about it. Right, and we want you all to think a little bit forward also. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times our, our videos are focused on getting you through no contact, making sure you still have your sanity throughout all of that. <laughs> but rarely do we think, okay, my ex did reply. Okay, we did go out. There is some momentum building. What do I do now? So I want to address this in this video for you to be prepared for that point if and when it comes for you. Yeah. So the very first thing is reestablishing that sense of safety in that relationship. You know, a lot of times what happens when relationships begin again is there is that period of, okay, we're testing the waters with each other here. We're trying to see if these issues are still raw, if this person is still super emotionally charged, mm -hmm. if they're prepared to have calm conversations with me. And one great tool that you can use is humor and playfulness and fun. Yes, this is really, really important, guys, because I know when I was going through breakups years ago, you would focus on, we have to fix this, we have to talk about these important things. And it's like, the other person just gets overwhelmed. Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't realize it. Mm -hmm. And going through a breakup, you feel like there's this big cloud around you. Mm -hmm. So when your ex might be in a different state, they're reconsidering the relationship. They're saying, well, let's see how this goes. And you have this dark cloud that's following you that you're bringing into now that, that reconnection. That's something that they sense. And it's hard. It's hard to get to a place where you're healed enough to have fun again, to be playful. Yes. And a big component of that is the fear. Mm -hmm. You know, you're afraid of your needs not getting met. And when you're fearful, how can you be playful and present? You can't. You know, being playful and fun is, you know, when you're living in the moment and you're not trying to manipulate somebody or manipulate a situation. You're mm -hmm. kind of vibing and you're in that flow with them and that connection feels natural. Mm -hmm. Craig is vibing. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the flow right there and then you threw me off. <laughs> but it's true, you know, you, you rarely see people in dire circumstances being imaginative and laughing and playful and yeah. creative. No, it's really when you feel the most safe, when you know that you are okay with, with any outcome that happens, which is hard to get yourself to that place, especially in front of your ex. Yeah. So we like, get that. Like I did stand up comedy for many years, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult to balance wanting to go up there and have fun and have fun with these ideas that you're working on that you find something funny about them but also 
having 300 people staring at you, judging you, expecting to laugh, and trying to make it, sh so they have a good time too. So the fear can really throw someone off in that moment because you're really trying to balance having fun with the anxiety of being in front of a lot of people and only a microphone and <laughs> everybody's staring at you and they have expectations. So the comic that can really be okay with bombing, they don't have to like it, but just, okay, I'm just gonna go out there and have fun and if they don't like it, you know, I'm gonna, I'll try again next time, you know, because you can do the same jokes deliver them almost the same way two shows on one night and one night you can have a great set and the other night people don't like you mm -hmm. you know so the anxiety and the fear can keep you from enjoying the moment right right and some people will actually tell you that fear and excitement feel similar in the body and so if you're able to convert that fear and tell yourself, my body is not afraid, it's excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that can sometimes <laughs> trick your brain into having a different attitude about what's ha going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So that can be a little biohack, life hack <laughs> that can help you through it. So creating that sense of safety again in that connection. Yeah. Also thinking about what your strengths were and are as a couple. And this is something that we lose sight of because we are so focused on the mistakes so focused on how we failed as, as a couple and as a relationship. Mm -hmm. You were bound to have some strengths, some things that you were really good at. Focus on those things. Those were the reasons why you stayed together. And even with Gottman's research, John Gottman, really famous psychology guy sure. who focuses on relationships, he talks about the ratio of positive interactions and positive moments with your partner versus negative ones. Uh, is really important. It can be the thing that makes or breaks your relationship mm -hmm. is having uh, a good ratio of positive moments to negative ones, meaning more positive moments than negative ones. Mm -hmm. And when we're thinking about this in reconnecting and rebuilding, we have to consider that, you know, are we creating these positive moments or is it becoming tense? Are we fighting with each other about what happened in the past? Are we, you know, getting caught up in what's happened throughout the breakup, mm -hmm. you know, and, and unable to, to feel safe again? So think about how you are approaching those initial interactions. Yeah, they're not easy. They are not easy to manage, uh, you know, those fears and, you know, not put pressure on yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people make the mistake of in that initial conversation with their ex, you know, it's going good for about 15 minutes on the phone mm -hmm. and then they can't help themselves. They don't get off the phone and set that date or a time to hang out and they start asking those tough questions and things like, well, do you think we're going to get back together? And it's going to spiral quick. Yeah. So yeah. you want to make sure those initial conversations are short. Please, I'm telling you, I've seen so many people yeah. email me that they the first 20 minutes, 30, even 30 minutes, but once you get past that point, it's, it's going to fall apart. Yeah, be able to have limits and boundaries for yourself. That also creates a sense of safety. When it's just you spiraling and maybe even them spiraling too, there's no sense of boundaries, there's no sense of safety. It's just, hey, we're trauma dumping now. And that's not good for anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... Uh, especially if you're on the phone, make sure those interactions are short. You really want to re-attract somebody in person and have a good time with them in person. Now, another thing to consider when you're repairing a relationship is that the breakup is like a wound and it takes time to heal from that. And you and your ex are going to heal at different speeds because you have different opinions about what happened and you both have different traumas, mm -hmm. attachment traumas and you know, different ways that you see things and feel things. So understand they may not be at the same speed at you or see it the same way you do, okay? So don't try and force it as the only, the way that you see it. You wanna try and understand how they see it too. And you wanna address the pain of the separation, the pain of the breakup. You know, a lot of times we'll get back together and the breakup is not something that we talk about as much as something that we avoid, something that happened in the past we think. It's important to address these things at some point, not initially. Yes, not initially. Like Great. Like we're saying, yes. not initially, but at some point. Mm -hmm. 
We don't want to pretend like nothing happened. A lot yeah. of times that can build resentment. And we also want to address the trust. You know, a lot of times that trust is broken in a breakup. The person who has been dumped, most likely you watching this video, mm -hmm. is going to think, well, are they going to break up with me again in the future? Mm -hmm. You know, how likely are they to leave me again? And that can create more insecurity in the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't feel as safe and, and secure. Yep. A couple things that you can ask is what happened in the breakup? You know, how did the breakup come about? Was it through text after a long-term relationship? Mm -hmm. you know, was it a situation where your ex left you for someone else? Yeah. Now there's that kind of betrayal mm -hmm. wound that's happening too. Were the two of you bad mouthing each other after the breakup? You know, is that something to repair from? Mm -hmm. Oof, you know, I told our mutual friends, you know, that you were a terrible person and all these bad things about you. you know, how do you work through some of those issues that are related to the breakup themselves? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there will be actions that are out of anger or immaturity that you do after a breakup. Hurt. Mm -hmm. Hurt. That when you're feeling that hurt, it just makes you almost enraged at times because you're so hurt by what they did, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you don't want to let this breakup be the reason for the second or third breakup. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. That is a great point because sometimes you're so hurt by the first breakup and that they could do this to you that you don't really fix things. You don't really talk about things or repair things or understand each other. And then you wind up breaking up again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you do eventually want to address the issues of the relationship itself. Eventually. Eventually. Not Eventually initially. is the key word there. Not initially. <laughs> not initially. You gotta kind of have mm -hmm. fun with them first and and create that attraction again and the excitement of seeing each other again. And to recap, that's more of the initial stage. Yes. You know, then being able to discuss the breakup itself mm -hmm. once things you know are safe and established and you're able to speak a little bit deeper about things. Mm -hmm. And then going into more of those core issues of the relationship itself. Yeah. You know, ideally, you've been able to do some self-reflection and some self-work during the breakup. Mm -hmm. This is what we hope for you during no contact. If you're in no contact, we also hope that your ex has been self-reflecting. We also hope that that's the reason why they decided to reconsider the relationship in the first place. You know, they've been able to say, okay, these are some ways that I contributed to the breakup. That's a great I'm point. rethinking my decision. That's a really big point right there because... Some of you guys are in situations where your ex is not going to do any work, mm -hmm. not going to take any responsibility, not going to take any accountability, just blame, blame, blame. And if you are being authentic with yourself and you see that it's on them too, then you got to be very, very careful in trying to proceed with that person. Because mm -hmm. if they're just blaming you for everything, you're never really going to be on equal grounds because you're always going to be trying to get their approval and try and always be trying to please them, mm -hmm. but it's never going to work. Right, right, exactly. You really have to think about what has happened during that time, how the two of you had made use of the breakup. Mm -hmm. There's some really important questions that the two of you can ask each other, like what changes have been made within you during the time of our breakup? <laughs> and that doesn't mean that it's been three weeks and right. you reach out and say, I've changed. Yep. I'm so different now. <laughs> right, right. No, you you haven't changed. It takes more time. It takes I'm sorry. Time. It takes it does. time conversations about how will we avoid these issues resurfacing this mm -hmm. is really important a lot of times we don't have these conversations we fall back into patterns we see it all the time and breakups happen again for the same core reasons mm -hmm. this is what we're trying to avoid we also want to have a conversation of what happens when we do sense these issues starting to resurface again and we don't want to delude you into thinking that you know once you get back together poof these issues don't exist anymore and just because you talk about how to avoid them that you will avoid them yeah. <laughs> right yeah. most likely they will rear their head here or there and knowing okay what do we do when we are starting to see them again or if these issues do happen again how will we handle it mm -hmm. you know, are these deal breakers or are they not you know so really thinking preventative you almost want to have a safety plan for your core issues mm -hmm. You know, who can we reach out to? How can we do something differently this time? Mm -hmm. You know, Einstein would say that famous quote of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different mm -hmm. results. Yeah. Okay, we don't want you guys to be in that situation where you are repeating those same core issues in relationships, thinking that something different is going to happen. It has to feel different for it to be different. That's a, a really important point. It has to feel different. Mm -hmm. 
And especially if you've been in a relationship for a long time, like say you've been with somebody for five, 10 years, mm -hmm. they're gonna know you mm -hmm. in many ways better than you know yourself. And so feeling different to those people, you have to do a lot of work, oh, yeah. okay? You have to work really, really, really hard for somebody that you've been with for five, 10 years that they know you so well. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to out like to really grow in a massive way in that time, but you can do it. I mean, I see lots of people do it, mm -hmm. but you have to, especially in those long relationships. Right, and you have to also continue the work. So when you get back together, you know that's not <laughs> just when you've changed and poof, that's it for the rest of eternity. You know, you have to continue developing and and growing. So if you were in a relationship where stagnancy and complacency was an issue, this is going to be hard because you're gonna be in a similar environment surrounded by you know, your ex with whom you have experience being complacent with. Yeah. Right. So being able to push through and continue growing, continue developing, thinking about what can help you stay disciplined. So this is really important. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to really think about discipline and you have to want to stay disciplined because mm -hmm. some people don't have the same kind of motivation as others, but Think about the pain that you're in right now. If you don't do something different and you don't really stay disciplined and you get back together, you're gonna feel this same pain again. And it may even be worse next time because next time you're gonna be like, I had the opportunity yeah. and I still didn't do what I needed to do mm -hmm. to really make this relationship grow. And mm -hmm. you're gonna feel worse. I've had so many people over the years, they get their ex back, and they don't tell us, and that, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that, that aggravates me. Yeah. I'm like, hold on a minute. You got your ex back and you didn't give me a success story? It know, happens all the time. Know, we gotta know, we gotta know. We want those success stories. Mm -hmm. Then they come back and they're like, I didn't do the work. Yeah. Yep. And they were, now they're in another breakup with the same person. Mm -hmm. And they feel awful. Yeah. Yeah, so yep. you gotta work on that. Another point that we wanna make is your ability to be present. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're talking about talking about past issues, talking about working those things through. Mm -hmm. We also want to be present. There's people who can perseverate and you know, spiral into thinking about the past and you kind of stay stuck there and it's hard to enjoy the new relationship. This is what you want to be able to do, yeah. is be present. Enjoy mm -hmm. the fact that things are different. Enjoy the fact that you know, the two of you have grown in the ways that you have. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because our brains can be repetitive sometimes. Our brains can replay those painful moments over and over and over again. You know, when we can start to, to hold a grudge towards our partner mm. for the relationship issues, for the breakup <laughs> itself, for other things. So be mindful of what you are bringing to the relationship. If you are able to be present and be open to new memories, be open to new experiences, new attitudes, yeah. new problems. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, there's there's always uh, evolution that's happening in every relationship. You're always evolving with each other. So being open and present. Yeah, but you have to really focus on the growth mm -hmm. because if you don't, you're going to be stuck in that same cycle mm -hmm. with the same problems. And it's like you're, you were in this cycle where you fought about the same things over and over and over again. And if you don't really work really hard at fixing those things while you're in no contact, when they come back, you're gonna be pulled right back in to those same problems again. Exactly, exactly. So it takes work, but it can be done, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and we're hoping that this, in the very least, gave you just a framework for repairing relationships. You know, we talked about that breakup, we talked about those core issues. There's a lot to work through. You know, yeah. it, is, it is a lot of work, but it is also rewarding. You know, couples break up and get back together all the time. Absolutely. It happens all the time. You just have to have those right skills and tools, and we're hoping to give you some of them that you can use in your personal life. Yeah. Check out the Creative Healing Course, mm -hmm. especially. It's huge. Mm -hmm. it is, there are so many activities, and we really tried to make it fun. Mm -hmm. The cartoons, you, every, all the time people tell us how much they love <laughs> <Yeah>. the cartoons. <laughs> there's lots of fun voices, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of poignant points to those little cartoons where you're going to find that this was you and your partner yeah and you're going to be able to laugh about it but also learn from it too exactly so mm -hmm. um check those out the creative healing course and the workbooks and of course if you want to get our help personally you can do that on my website askcraig.net i do email coaching and i do skype 
Coach Victoria is available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.